Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Jamaica Politics Uncovered. New subscribers, welcome. Returning subscribers, welcome back. Guys, today we have some breaking news and we also have some other things to talk about. I hope everybody is doing well this evening. I thank you for stopping by here to tune in to this platform and what we have to say here. So let us see who is here. Give our friends a shout out and thanks for joining. As usual, the usual suspects. Christ child, good evening. Bless up yourself. Thank you for joining. Electro, likewise. Big up yourself. Rosalie, good to see you back. Uh, let's see. Anybody new here? If you are new to the platform, welcome and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Claudian, welcome back. Make sure that you guys are sharing this platform and our content with your friends. So guys, we have some breaking news this evening. Um, I guess I guess we need to do a little new. We have a new introduction over here now. Don't tell me if you don't like it. Yes, see it here. Yeah, guys, we we'll upgrade over here. Big, nice introduction and everything. I don't like it. Yeah, man. So, one must, must hear the breaking news today. The breaking news is that the top prosecutor of Jamaica, Miss Paula Llewellyn, has lost her job. Paula Llewellyn has lost her job. Remember, I think it was two days ago, guys, I did an upload saying that, listen, this is a serious matter. The matter before the Supreme Court which was brought by the opposition on Friday. Um, sorry, the result that came today, I said, look, this lady could lose her job. You know, I don't know how many people knew that the, um, the decision would come today, but, you know, it is what it is. They challenged the constitutionality of the amendment and the Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional to do so. I'm going to let you guys hear some of the arguments, but I didn't bring the whole thing, guys, because um, I don't want to take too much of the content over at the Jamaica Judiciary's YouTube page. But you guys can go over there and listen to the whole thing. It was recorded. So let me make you hear what went down. And I'm also going to let you hear when it was initially debated in the parliament and guys don't get me wrong you know there's absolutely nothing wrong with amendment amending the constitution but i think because it is such a serious matter i think it must be put before both sides and you know properly debated or argued but there's a reason why I think we are treading some uncharted waters. And when I, when I say that, what I mean is with an opposition led by Bunting and Golding, you know, who, who, who would really in their right mind take them seriously? Like, I wouldn't. You understand, guys? I guarantee if it was somebody else or other people, you know, you know leading the PNP, it would have been taken a little more seriously. But that's not to say that any government should bring forth you know these amendments without properly discussing it but let me let you hear the video and then we'll come back guys first this evening the government uses majority in parliament to pass a bill to increase the retirement age for the director of public prosecutions dpp and the auditor general from 60 to 65 years now this despite strong objections from the parliamentary opposition the update follows a 2020 recommendation from the prime minister for dpp paula llewellyn's tenure to be extended for three years andrea chisholm has the details the bill is seeking to amend two sections of the Constitution, sections 96-1 and 121-1. Both sections indicate that the Auditor General and DPP shall hold the office until age 60. 
Justice Minister Delroy Chuck told the Parliament that the age ceiling for both offices is five years shorter than what's outlined in the Pensions Public Service Act. Madam Speaker, the proposed amendment to the Constitution will allow for the expansion of the term of service from 60 to 65 years, thereby addressing the inconsistency that currently exists between the two pieces of legislation and by extension creating a more level playing field for all. These amendments raise the age of retirement to 65 years and allow the Governor General in appropriate cases to permit an extension up to 70 years. Paulwell et al. and the Attorney General of Jamaica. King's Council having announced the representation, we will now get into the reasons for our decision. We will commence with the issue which the court had to decide. Payments that the amendment is unconstitutional and should be struck down on the basis that the current DPP has already received one extension in office and should not benefit from the act which seeks to grant a second extension. Yeah, guys, so that's how it went down today. Just a second, guys. Yeah, so that's how it went down today. And, you know, like I told you guys before, me not really have no heart in a disarray center. Me know people are going to play politics on the back and forth about it. You know, we have one year before an election. So there's a lot of angst. There's a lot of, you know, one-upsmanship and all these kind of things. Just over here, I just want to see a prosecutor's office that is hell-bent on bringing justice for every citizen in the country when they need it and make sure that everybody is treated equally under the law. Now, Paula was, Paula's office was presiding over some very important cases in the country. So I don't know as of right now, guys, if she'll be able to continue. I doubt it because of the ruling today. Now, it raises the question, who will the Prime Minister appoint next to be the prosecutor, the top prosecutor of the country? We have the case that was supposed to start April 15th, which was postponed for Keith Clark. We have this case before the court, same way. Leoda has not taken a plea as yet. So this is still before the court. And most importantly, we are stakeholders over here of this case with Jolly and Silvera, right? Where them take out Melissa and come tell me she died in her sleep of aneurysm and natural cause. You understand? So the next prosecutor who's going to be appointed, we need to know who he or she is, what is their political affiliation, if any, because Jamaica is, everything in a Jamaica is politicized. I hate it. Like, honestly, we must can have uh, different bodies function without it being so politicized and the politics is so permeated in everything, right? So we, we're, we're going to be expecting, you know, the next appointed prosecutor to, be, to go hard, as our prosecutors should, in the name of justice. So, I know a lot of people are happy about Paula's departure. And, you know, people have their reasons. You have the Vibes Cartel case where, you know, those who support Cartel, they don't like Paula. And to be honest with you, no matter where in the world you are as a prosecutor, it's a very hard job. And it's a job that most people you know, probably wouldn't do. And they're always going to get a fight from people who, you know, are either tribal, people who not really like justice or anti-system or anti-police or anti-this or anti-that. You're going to have those people. 
But me personally, how I feel about prosecutors, you know, they have a job to do. Their job is to make sure that them come down hard upon people who violate the law. They have their job to do. But no matter where we stand, we must all understand, you know, their role in society and how important it is. Because when I, you want justice, you want your prosecutor, wherever you are in the world, to go hard. That's their job. You understand? You have those in the opposition who are happy that Paula is gone. And I don't know why. Because I don't know if it is because they feel like, you know, Silvira is not is gonna have an easy easy go after she's gone. I don't know why. Why is it that members of the opposition would be glad. I mean, granted, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be truthful and I'm going to be fair in saying that the government, you cannot come with a bill and expect to pass it without it being properly examined to make sure that it is aligned with the constitution of the country. Right? You you just can't do that. So I would say on a year in at the beginning of the video I'm a player where Delroy Chuck Delroy Chuck was debating it, you know, and he was saying it's, it's all right. To be honest with you guys, I never really as a justice minister in a Jamaica, I don't really know I don't really know about Delroy. I don't I don't, I don't know. What do you guys think about the right Chuck? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to unfairly criticize him, but I don't know. I mean, the right bring something come a parliament one time, say, for out, out, like, Obi and all and sitting there. And we, in Jamaica, we've got so many issues to worry about. And for the justice minister, if you come tell the people, them say, oh, la, Obia. I don't know who, listen, if people want to take up their money, go give Obia man, that's a for them business, right? And if the Obia man is making a living that way, then hey, let them do their thing. As long as them not physically hurt nobody and they're sitting there, love them. We got more important things to do in the country, right? So, what does the future hold for Paula? I don't know. She's um 64 years old, I believe. You know, I hope that if she's not ready to retire, that you know, there's some some opportunity for her, you know, to pursue her career or continue pursuing her career. She's the first female um DPP in Jamaica, you know, so she sort of broke some kind of a glass ceiling which we must not dismiss, right? Now, whether she did a good job as DPP is debatable. You know, we can debate that another time. But at the end of the day, um, she had one extension. And, you know, she sought another or the government pushed forth another for her and um, the Auditor General. There is nothing wrong with amending a constitution, but it cannot be a one-sided thing. But this is where this is where I get agitated, guys. I'm middle of telling you. Know. Where I get agitated, you see one time, members of the opposition, I got to tell Andrew them, say, listen, on the use of the majority, and do this on the use of the majority and did what? Did that, this and did that. Right? It's these same people, you know, guys. The majority where Andrew owners have, at them same one sabotage their own party for lose badly, you know. Because they never want their leader for winning, you know. And it made them come down to 14 seats, you know. They were going around telling people not to vote for PNP and saying that Peter Phillips can't win. All these things is them physically sabotage their own party. Mark Golden did and Peter Bunting. They made sure 
that not only the party lost bad, but lost badly, very badly. So that's why them come down to a measly 14 seats. So how are they going to cost the government now and talk about, say, them use them majority? Them supposed to use them majority because that want to help them get that majority. And I set a man who is going to sabotage themselves and them leader just because, just because they want power. What kind of respect will you have for people like those? I wouldn't even want to sit at a table with people like that, honestly. But as I said, under normal circumstances, under normal circumstances, when it comes down to touching the Constitution, we want to make sure that we are doing the right thing in terms of uh, making sure it's in keeping with you know, people's rights and, you know, how things are supposed to be and things like that, you know. Um, so on the opposition side, it was Palwell and a uh, member of parliament, Philip Palwell and Senator Donna Scott Motley, who really initially spoke publicly, as you see, they were before the courthouse, talking and i'm telling you these journalists in jamaica they need to really get some lessons on how to present their findings to the nation because they were talking with paul and donna and is beer nice in the background you can't hardly hear what's going on so them need the all them have to do are ask them to step back inside you know so them can talk to them and we can't hear them you know you know but you can't be doing an interview um as important as this one and you have the people them outside and are being nice. That don't make no sense. So it was them who, at the end of the judgment, you know, came out and spoke publicly. And I guess the one in the middle there, he came in at the, at the last minute. But I don't understand something, guys. A major, major case like this. It says, Paul Well et al versus attorney general of jamaica the person's name who should have been on the the case here on behalf of the opposition it should have been mark Golding. but let me just tell you something and i don't make no apology when i say this you see mark Golding. mark Golding believes he's still on a plantation and mark Golding expects to be the king of the castle and everybody else must do the work. He does no work. He expects Paul well to do all the work, Lisa to do all the work, Donna and those people. And everybody just coalesce around the English king. That's his mindset. And you see, a strong African woman like all me now, when I say strong, I talk about strong in my mentation, and strong in my roots, and strong in my history. Me not discriminate people, you know. But let me tell you something. Me not see myself less than no man or no woman around here. Him get the biggest peer as the opposition leader. But him feel like him, the cotton picker them around him. The Paul, well, the Lisa, the Donna, them supposed to go do all of the work. And him sit down and take the glory. And that's some know them are idiot come. Them, you see them? Donna. Paul, well, the only somebody to tell you the truth from the opposition side of me, that's a respect, Joe. Alisa and a couple others. But you see them are idiots, you know? Them can never get me to look upon them and give them no form of respect. And I just the truth. Them go to university and then get law degree. The two of them are liars, you know? The three of them are liars, as a matter of fact. But the two of them... Where they pan Mark Golden plantation, um, Paul well, you can see body language there, so and Danny, you can see fear body language too. Them no, them no make sense. Them parents supposed to shame at them. For no so they send them go to school for your sense. And this is where them come down to pat water. So Paul was the one who really led this whole thing 
with the last with the with the, the case of the constitution and them something there. And you know, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good for Jamaica, to be honest. To know that the prosecutor, the top prosecutor of the country, you know, she had one extension. And then if we if we go over Jamaica judiciary, I hear the arguments of the judge. You know, she got one extension and then she asked for another. And based on that, or based on whatever, I mean, I know what was Delroy Chuck's um, justification for messing with the Constitution. You don't do that. And, you know, it, it, look how we upon Paula, it's very embarrassing. Yeah, it is embarrassing. And it did not have to come to that. All he had to do was to consider the implication, right? And they'll write Chuck, them said, I'm going to appeal. Them said, I'm going to appeal. I don't know what they're going to appeal. <laughs> because the judge, the Supreme Court of the land, tell them, say, they violate the Constitution. You don't normally, nobody not going to come overturn that. So, them people here, them need to look at themselves, right? And do what is right. Because even if them don't want to engage these guys, which I don't think they should. But even if they don't want to engage them, that doesn't mean that you don't stop and examine the thing before you act. Do something that makes sense. I am curious to know. You see, it's the same way that Bunting went ahead and write these, these immunities, these immunity certificates, right? After three soldiers put over 21 shot in a one little man in a house, in a back. Hmm? You're going to give immunity certificate. What can go so good faith certificate? It just make him look heartless and cool and careless and evil. Satan supervisor, Bunting is. Oh, you're going to see something like that. I come talk about good faith. Where the hell is the good faith in this? This is supposed to be put before a jury. What kind of good faith? People don't understand them. People, you're wicked, man. I know self defense, you know. They don't say, the man, the man fire no shut off of them or none of them sitting there. They never say the man was a threat to them, you know. All, in, all we hear, you know, the man in our house. I'm a show, you know, the crime scene. Oh, the man vehicle be a shot to the man vehicle and to the man house. And I demand a widow go to the court and challenge them. And the Supreme Court told Bunting that his made up, callous, cool, calculated certificate of so called good faith was unconstitutional. So those soldier man supposed to go up on trial the 15th of April, we want to know how that are going to go. And who going to preside over it? Because I think it postponed to April 28th. I don't understand if these people don't, don't, don't think like when they're making these decisions, the constitution of an organization or an institution or a country, you know, when you are at, when you're serving the people, where you have to do with laws and legislations and things like that, whenever you do something, the first thing is supposed to, first of all, you're supposed to know the constitution. Second of all, when you act, you must ask yourself, am I acting in keeping with the constitution? Thank God for appeals and Supreme Courts and things like that. Because, right, yes, so if there was nobody to stop Bunting from where him do, the man not get no justice. Because this is the argument, the main argument of the soldier and him attorneys, them. Them attorneys are saying that they got immunity. They're not saying they're, you know, saying they're not saying, you know, they didn't do anything. They're saying, look, we got immunity. So they're relying solely on the fact that Bunting gave them a certificate that says a good faith certificate. And this fool said he was advised 
to do so. Now, we want to know. This is why this has to go to trial, because he need to bring the lawyer away, advise him that this would be okay. This is why me people have a mistrust, distrust, I'm sorry, of Jamaica's justice system. And this is not good for a healthy democracy. Now, Paula, in summary, on this topic of what happened to Paula, Paula did not put herself back there for a second extension. She didn't put herself back there. Why this happened to Paula? This happened to Paula because you have people in the parliament who have scant regard for our constitution. And then they misuse the courts and it's, it's getting ridiculous now. They need to know the constitution of the land and they need to respect the constitution just like how they expect Jamaicans to respect the law. Now, let us read some of the comments. I'm sorry, guys. The phone line is open, guys. And you can call if you don't want to. Let me put the um the phone number on WhatsApp, guys. Call if you want to call. And tell me what you think. Border ruling now come down from parlor. Tell me if you think this is um, a blow to the government. Is there any victory to be taken by the opposition? As I said, Paula didn't put herself there. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess one of these days we can debate whether she was a good DPP. You know? So, let me read some of the comments. Yeah, man, justice for Melissa. Mm -hmm. We now go come out here and come say, boy, they move Paula. Turn on back your light, no girl. And come out of my room and shut the door. So, sure. anyway, guys, I am not going to be here. Sorry for my. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm talking to my daughter. But anyway, guys. We're not going to sit down here and tell them to say a conspiracy. And I true them now and Sylvia got a prison why them get rid of Paula. I'm not going to talk that because remember say, remember say this was brought to the court before Sylvia killed Melissa. And before they cover it up. And one thing I don't understand though, like seriously in a Jamaica, Mark Golden come out, come tell the nation, say, Melissa dead from natural cause and, uh, and send condolence to Melissa, to Silvera. Why is it that the, the, the legal general counsel, sorry, the legal counsel of Jamaica and the police and the very prosecutors in Jamaica, why is it that they cannot investigate Mark Golden to see if Mark Golding perverted the course of justice, them can carry Paula name God Supreme Court. But because Mark Golding is an Englishman, Mark Golding, as the opposition leader of the country, came out and told Jamaica that Melissa died of natural cause and sent condolence to her husband who killed her. And members of his party who helped cover it up. So tell me, Jamaica, why is it that them have strength for Paula and the rest of black Jamaican them in the country, but then don't have no strength for bring Mark Golden forward and ask him why him come tell Jamaica that? And was he trying to cover up for Silvera? Hello, good night. Welcome to JPU. Good evening, 
Natalie. Good evening, my friend. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. And the um picture with Pete with a um, Mark Golding and this case that is going on and on, on, um thing there. Is it because Mark Golding is quite why you afraid to um call him and Melissa um thing there? Investigation? Yes, then I hear me attack it's just to my English man. Yeah, I don't understand why why this country is so corrupt. I remember when Edward Siaga was the um, opposition leader. A lot of people have been saying, oh, I'm not voting for no white man because he's white and he's this and he's that. The same PMP they was bashing Edward Siaga. I look at it now. Well, and what they do now? I am talking based on a situation that happened. I'm not even going to really get into it too much about his skin color. But I understand where you're coming from. It does look like a hypocrisy when yes. Edward Siaga came and said black man time No, Right? PJ, PJ Faxon. Sorry, PJ. Yes, so I understand where you're coming from. But right now, we, you, you're talking about the Melissa case. If it was any other Jamaican yeah. who was leading a major political party and a woman so brutally and viciously killed, and then he comes out and... Uh, send condolence to the killer and nobody's asking him why did you do that why did you mislead the country and tell the country that the woman died from natural cause what was your reason he needs to tell jamaica why he did that that's what I, that's what i'm saying every old wicked girl i'm wishing him again a little bit of blood she gave away um dr Daz. why dr Daz was on the scene but not even him not come not even him now come tell Jamaica why he was there, you know. And what he yeah. did when he got there. All of them must say must get investigated for true. Of course, even Miguel Phillips, who was there, all of them must get investigated. I think Mikhail talk I think Mikhail talked to the police. Him talk to the police, but at the same time, we in you know, the public and the Jamaican people them who are pay them, the taxpaying Jamaican them who are pay them. Them need to hear why Mikhail was there and who called Mikhail there and what were they told. You All think right, some me, you think some me could I get compromised in a case like this? I'm gonna come clear my name. Me now wait for a trial for come clear my name if me not sent enough. Me I come clear my name now. You know, you know what I'm looking at too. You see, you see, Andrew even with this lecture and I blame him too a lot because you see, when Paul Wright beat up his wife. It was the slang in Parliament. Oh, Paul Wright must go. Paul Wright must go. Paul Wright must go. Now you have an opposition leader who is his bodyguard, his big friend, is um King Mary in Saint Mary Martin Chairman, murder his wife. Well, huh? we don't stop uh -huh. said justice for Melissa, but thank you for calling. Okay, I'm yeah. good Same to you. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye. Yeah. Guys, we can't tell you say in any other country, civilized, developed country, Mark Golden couldn't come out in front of no media and say nothing about that case. Yeah. He couldn't come out come talk to nobody. He may have to first explain himself. Explain him. Yeah, let me tell you something. One of the things Mark Golden had to come himself go live in England, where him two parents them born, and all they raise him um, English, he's not going to do it because why? He can get away in a Jamaica with a lot more as an Englishman than he can get away in England. If he was in England and, a, and leading a major party, come out, come tell the nation, say, in bodyguard or in, in secret service, whatever you want to call Silvera, and him come tell the nation, say, him friend, condolence to him friend or killing wife. Yes, him friend who killed him wife, condolence to him, and I come talk like Melissa died from natural cause. You see, the moment that the autopsy they come out, Mark Golden would have to tell England and Wales why he came out and did that. Did he go there and help with the murder scene? Was he protecting Jolly and Silvera? All these questions would have been asked of him. As a matter of fact, you know see what, they, you know see what they, they, they party do to, to Boris Johnson? When them tell him, say, must step down and him don't want to step down, the whole of them resign from him. 
That's why the uh, Mark, um, to Mark Golden. In party, would I tell him they must step down? And if he don't want to step down, everybody just must resign, must resignation for him. But in the PNP now, Kangaroo Party, same thing. I don't understand them, your people. I mean, I don't understand them. Same way when Karen said that Dayton is a pedophile and put statement in a courthouse and kind of something. Mark Golden and Peter Bunting come out and say they are standing by Dayton Campbell. Jesus Christ. People, I don't know this boy from Adam. I mean, we say, we don't like him too much because he ran a very nasty campaign when he was leading Bunting's campaign. Some things me hear him do and talk. I could never respect a person like this. Right? But it was alleged that he is a serial pedophile, asleep with the young girls, them, and I give them things and all kind of something. And you as opposition leader, you have to hear that. And instead of saying, since he brought it to court and calling calling defamation, let justice take its course. And in the meantime, let us get this away from our party. And in the interest of the Jamaican people, them hug it up and them say them standing by him. And the same thing will come see with Silvera, murder Melissa, and then cannot expel him from the park. Only no sister them people here, some demons, man. They must stand for nothing. This is serious, you know, guys. This is very serious. And then them looking at the Jamaican people and with all the things them that they have done. Inconscionable from the 90s. And I went talk to you know, about what these people are planning to come to Jamaica people. You know, see that company there in Jamaica when you improve them? Let me just tell you right here, so. Just pinch you and tell you this right now. Come in and talk everything about proven right now. You know, tomorrow. When you come back over here, so tomorrow and call everybody in Jamaica, I tell you. Yes, see, proven. Proven is basically DB and G 2.0. I don't remember what DB and G do. All of the things, them, the assets and the people, them also, everything where the people, them lose in a thin sack. Them, your people here benefited half of it. Half of the misery and sorrow of people. The little or nothing. Some of them same politicians here get the people, them house. This is like a local backdoor, a local underground something. This could have flourished in America, them time, you know. When they do they sit they sit at the Jamaica people, you know. But I have some information for going to tomorrow. But yes, the proven world. This is the brainchild of Bunting and Golding. No, DB and G was the brainchild of Bunting and Golding. And they graduated. And they're the brainchild of Proven Wealth. So you know where them come back for do you know? Jamaica people, if you don't want to be stupid, that is for the business. You don't know? have no picnic them, and you don't niece and nephew and cousin and everybody. Yes, if election day, you don't have to vote for save Jamaica. Me and nobody else can help you. you know? Because I tell you, you already say, you see, who can afford to run will run. You know? But you see, those who can't, hey, hey. Those who can't, eh? I don't nah say nothing no more. I just uh, come give you the information. Tell you no what you need for know. Right? And the rest is up to you. I live in America. Right? And I have my family in Jamaica. I said, we contributing members of society. One a nurse, a police. I have several police, a soldier, family members. Right? And I have other family members contribute to their community and their country, right? And anytime you want to come, to, if I want to move back to Jamaica tomorrow, man, and there's not one thing that can stop me. 
And I, I always want to feel comfortable doing that. So you see, if only no one join the fight against wicked people and come try to take on a country to enrich themselves, only can stay there. May have a US passport, you know. So when we come out here, I come give you the information. If no one learn and pass on the information and try to educate other people, right? Because bad to bad, we know say Jamaica people are not really come out come vote right now. Why? Why do you think Jamaica people now come out come vote? I never never say nothing. You can't think about it. Why Jamaica people have abstained from voting? Something is wrong. And you see one time the people them are so detached. They now participate. That's the best time. That's the best time for these political scavengers to swoop down and come get power. Now, I don't know which 18 seats they're going to win. I don't know which 18 seats the JLP is going to lose. A lot of you, not a lot of you, but some will say they can't win, especially those who support the Labour Party. And even our correspondent here, Liz, who I think is, you know, quite knowledgeable, and I've seen many elections, Liz so even said them cannot win, but I don't share that. I don't share that. Um, I don't share that opinion because I have seen enough and analyzed enough where one thing I'm going to say is if Donald Trump can win an election anywhere in the world, let alone in America. And because I understand what, what can happen when people are not participating you know, the majority of the people are not participating in the electoral process. I know what the outcome of that can be. I am not sitting here telling you that majority of Jamaicans are going to come out and vote for these guys. You will never, ever see that happen in Jamaica. You will not see the majority come out to come put them in people in a power in a general election. I think Jamaicans are a little smarter than that. But remember, I'm going to play a video phone last night. I'm sure I'm going to say, what I'm going to plan for do is buy votes. It's not me to act it, you know. It's Dayton Campbell to act it. On election day, when you go out there, do you hear everybody ask about money? On election day, when you go out there, you know, everybody asks about money. Look here. And some people right just in that room now. I go want uh, money for vote this ever. So that he can lead. He must inspire by example. And above all, he must have integrity. 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 Only honesty can lead the people in. Guys, them have them plan. Them have them plan. You see them from the overproven wealth? Them that they are salivate. Them friend with inapproven wealth. Remember I said about bunting and golden are the co-founder for proven you know, guys. They are the co-founders for proven. So you see them friend with India were doing it to them campaign and shoot them and tell them, say, go on, man, we support you. We donate to them and tell them to them for go on. Go on, go get power. So that our company can spread all over the world and rare. They have them plans, you know. Only can't say, I never tell you, you know. They're not business with you, you know. So them have them friends in approval and look through the window. I wait upon them for contact the reins of government. Only never see them get. um. Tomorrow, I tell you now. I don't really want to get too deep into this tonight. But tomorrow, I tell you now. I plan, them I plan to buy the people, them vote. Them do it in the internal election in a PNP. 
the 10 million, you know, so the day when the internal election happened, one woman called me from Westmoreland, you know, mm, Westmoreland. The woman said, Jesus Christ, has so much money them have, and them could help Peter Phillips. Mr. Lady, what are you talking about? The woman said she was at the high school where they have the voting station and the amount of money. I pay, pay them pay people for vote. If Mark Golden never spend no money, him could have never beat Lisa Anna. Mark Golden had to shell out a whole heap of money for bribe the people them for vote for him. This never happened yet in a no internal election in a JLP na a PNP. These corrupt people are them come do them something in a Jamaica politics, a corrupt Jamaica politics, more than a corrupt already. Remember them come out brawling with $10 million. I buy the people them. And plus with them put in an envelope and them something they and give people. Remember said Donna Scott Motley did come out come talk it, you know. And said them have no integrity. And they're not fit to lead. This no, and I quote, they're not fit to lead this noble party, and they're not fit to lead this great country. Donna Scott, I showed you guys the video already. Where she they had the press conference, I think it was Pegasus. When the comrades them are sure them say, look what them do, them are give all heap of money. And then come out in a press conference, come bring them down, bunting. I give the people them money, buy love. And I'm all when him buy the love the people them running West said with. So guys, this is going to be the most important election of me and for owner time. Our era, this is going to be the most important election. Give me a second, guys. I'm online. Yes, good guys. Night, so Liz is here with us. Liz is here with us. So good night to the people, them, Liz, and um, let's get into it. Good night, everybody. Everybody hearing me well? Yeah, man. Everybody here, yeah, yo. Yeah. Okay. So, Liz, I was talking to you earlier. And me, I said, I'll tell the people them say you need justice because Liz not have no water, guys, from Wednesday. A Wednesday? Yeah, from Wednesday, we, we have no water. And National Water Commission is not saying to us in the Maligned Garden area, Okay, this is the problem, but that's the problem. Are we not seeing any water trucks? We're not hearing anything. They just have re read, um, re the water elsewhere from us, and there's nobody talking to us, and it's getting chronic. Okay, well, Jamaica Water Commission, we don't need to talk to the people. Them, yes, we know drought are going and everything, but what do you guys have to say to? The people them owner have water for days on end. What is the plan? We already had the discussion that Jamaica does not have an adequate plan for the drought, the chronic drought situation that we face as a country. So Liz, what whoops say them are area or somebody go tell them say Molines Garden, right? They want water. Yeah. So Liz. Wait, before we move forward, what's happening? I did call. RG and newsroom tonight, just before the news, talked to Miss Maitland, a reporter, and she has promised because I told her this is the situation in Mullines Garden is not normal. Okay. And it is hard, yeah, you know, um, to not be told anything, no effort to be made to get us water. And um, what we do know is that the water has been reshed or re channeled away from us to the old pastures area and that is unfair nobody's talking to us okay so, you know she said to me and if we don't get that i have made about 20 calls and i'm asking persons for support tomorrow morning if we don't see any water tonight to get to the boulevard and we do a demonstration and we'll see what's about it all right cool thank you yeah and if anybody else and if, if anybody live in a um that part of Jamaica. Uno, uno need to get with Liz and uno go protest for no water. Go protest and yeah. ask them when they must send some water. Cause you have all old people, you know. 
And it, yes, me me know, me know know about Jamaica right now. I haven't checked the weather in a few days, but you know, in parts of America, it's it's pretty. It's ninety degrees Celsius. Sorry, Fahrenheit. You know, it's very hot. The time I get hot, so water and something where, you know, you can't starve out the people in boat at this time. And no, there's a drought, but there has to be a plan to make sure that some form of water reach the people and before people start dead from not having water. Uh, no, um, Liz, <coughs> excuse me. So you must have heard the breaking news today about um, Paula Lowlin. Yeah. And the Supreme Court decision and all of that. What do you have to say about that tonight? Okay, um, the panel of judges consisted of three female judges in the, in the court today that made the decision. The DPK office is a commission of the parliament and falls within the remit of the Ministry of Justice. Mm. He asked for an extension. She made the constitution said the DPP limits office at 60 years. However, he's entitled to ask for and gain one extension of two years. She did. After she made it, she reached 60, she asked for two years extension in 2020. And it ended on in July, I think, of 2023. When that um, tenure was about to end, she asked, she was the one who asked for another extension. And uh, it was granted. However, just before the government realized quickly that it was unconstitutional mm -hmm. and so they came to parliament they hatched a document came to the parliament presented by the minister of justice bell right chuck saying that we're quoting sections of the constitution which is not true and uh, saying that she is entitled and can be granted the second extension the part of the constitution that he quoted, civics in school, civics in school, that's another thing we are campaigning and I'm asking everybody to join in. The part of the constitution that he quoted is saying that for her to grant to be granted the full pension earned by the DPP office, then she can be given an extension until she reaches the age of what, 65 or 64. It never said or sanctioned that she can get a second extension. She have made the requirement to get the full pension from the, um, from the DPP office. So all she should have done graciously and gracefully uh, from 20, she was appointed in 2008. And after it complete, it, it, this, the first extension was completed in 2023, July, she should have been in office because there are several senior, um, several senior um, uh, prosecutors that has left the office citing the, how oh, she has been uh, running the office. Mm. There's a... DPP call here. There were several others, and the lady last year who wrote to the Governor General asking that this extension, the second one, not be extended or granted because it is unconstitutional. The lady did say that. So, who you think I'm going to replace so, her now? Who you think I'm going to replace her? Well, there's a competent um, Jeremy Taylor. Um, there, there are, I, I don't know if they can recall those senior here is one of them who had left before, but Jeremy Taylor is, is very competent and he's the most senior of, of, of the present, um, person still in the employee of the DPP office, but the DPP office is structured in a way, you know, that the succession to the office of DPP has always been in place. So there are several qualified um, senior persons there. Some has left, and I think they can be recalled. Let me tell you how I feel about this uh, situation, Alice. 
First of all, I kind of like the idea of a woman being there. I don't know why, but I just feel like yeah. say, a woman is going to do her job and do it to the fullness, to the, to the best of her ability. You see, I feel like there's something. You see, in a country like Jamaica, I don't tell a lie, no. We have seen that majority, a vast majority of these top jobs, you know, whether they head of the country, they head of party, they head of this, they head of that. A man mostly lead them and look at the country that we have. I'm not saying that every woman that come along is going to do a good job. I don't, I don't measure doing well by gender in everything, Right? But I feel like they must find a qualified female and put there. Sometimes, you know, or should I say most of the times, I feel like, say, in a Jamaica, most of the men, them are too easily corruptible. I don't know if you feel that way, but I don't know. Me, me just, you know, the, the one upsmanship on there sitting there, you know, and with the cons. You see, what they right truck going there, go do, make a play it back for those who just have come. Liz, hang on there. Let her play the initial yeah. the initial argument that Delroy Chuck made the day that the day when they passed it. Well, first this evening, the government uses majority in parliament to pass a bill to increase the retirement age for the director of public prosecutions, DPP, and the Auditor General from 60 to 65 years. Now, this despite strong objections from the parliamentary opposition. The update follows a 2020 recommendation from the Prime Minister for DPP Paula Llewellyn's tenure to be extended for three years. Andrea Chisholm has the details. The bill is seeking to amend two sections of the Constitution, sections 96-1 and 121-1. Both sections indicate that the Auditor General and DPP shall hold the office until age 60. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck told Parliament that the age ceiling for both offices is five years shorter than what's outlined in the Pensions Public Service Act. Madam Speaker, the proposed amendment to the Constitution will allow for the expansion of the term of service from 60 to 65 years, thereby addressing the inconsistency that currently exists between the two pieces of legislation and, by extension, creating a more level playing field for all. These amendments raise the age of retirement to 65 years and allow the Governor General in appropriate cases to permit an extension up to 70 years. Paul Well et al. and the Attorney General of Jamaica. King's Council. Boy, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, she already got one extension. She asked for another. Are they proposed that she have an? I don't know. But... <laughs> When you go to, uh, what I will say is when you go to amend the constitution, there must be arguments made going across the table and everybody must come to a decision. I don't really love the idea of, you know, this look a short, short business where, you know, get the appropriate time for people make their arguments. I don't, I don't like that. But at the same time, I understand that the quality of our parliament in Jamaica, and Liz, you may agree with this, the quality of our parliament is at an all-time low because you have a set of saboteurs and underminers in there where they were never focused on what is good for the people that they are representing. They were never focused on bringing quality to the parliament. They were never focused on doing what is right by the people. They have been focused on sabotaging their leader, bringing down their party. You cannot have people like that dealing with the business of the Jamaican people, right? And at this, them come down to now put chain up a man neck. And look here, man. Look here, people. No one are doing the country, you know, because you say every last one we pay us up, we're responsible to, you know. Yes. Everybody who go to the poll go vote for them people yeah, or who don't vote, whether you're voting to, for them to be member of parliament or voting for them to be leader of this and that, the whole are responsible, you know. I can't tell you, you know, when I talk to my family in Jamaica, when I'm not voting, 
me I talk to them, I make sure I say, me talk to them about politics and me talk to them about the country. And them know say I'm the information woman in the family. Me talk to them about their sickness. So when a time and election time come, them know what they do and know say, yes, you want to participate in the direction of your country. But don't go do no damn foolishness. Because you also suffer the consequence. And me, I know one of them kind of family member where any able foolishness. You're not going to put in people who are not going to do right by you. And they are going to come stress out the family them abroad about money. We're not run dirty joke. So everybody must take a responsibility and know, say, it's our country. All our way, no matter if we jail PP and PR no P. It's our country uh -huh. and we must know what we are doing with our country. True. So um, I don't know if you if you agree is about the quality of the parliament today. Yes. Um let us look at the composition. Um the drink what is the color say I'm good and bad. But honestly if you look at the composition both sides, if you extract uh, Peter Phillips and Lisa Anna, then it's going to be very difficult, very difficult to find a third person with, um, if you include the Senate, the Senate and then, if you extract Peter Phillips, Lisa Anna, uh, and Damian Crawford, uh, to an election, then you will, um, be in serious trouble finding a third person to name with integrity. Mm. Very difficult. That's a very interesting a statement. Liz, yeah, let me yeah. I want you to answer this person real quickly. Um Jamaican TV.com is asking, does anyone here believe that the DPP has done a good job in her position? Um what she has done, honestly, is that she has brought the DPP office into a glamorous, a celebrity style status. She's the first female DPP and she's the first DPP, sorry, to have ever been uh, so often on television. So what she has done, she has glamorized, bring a celebrity status to the DPP office. However, in what way, Liz? That's Liz. Liz, you have to clarify that statement by telling the people how she has done that. Okay, I don't know if anybody can remember two former DPP. Ken Pantry was before her, and Malawi Ford husband, and um, can't remember them all right now. They do two immediate ones, but they never they did their work, excellent work. And their case results um, spoke for itself from the uh, the published reports in the media. However, she has changed all of that. For example, pre pre case trials, she usually she has started out by coming to the media, having press conference, and making you know um. Uh, statements uh, based on the cases that she um she has brought to the to the courts mm -hmm. rather than do it do the cases because for example vibes got there rather than the meticulous work being done to guarantee that there will be no loopholes no loopholes the question of when they the DPP on that trial heard that the, there was a tainted jury and immediately asked Justice Leonard Campbell to stop the proceedings, and he did. And they met in chambers, and uh, the, the DPP, uh, Jeremy Taylor, asked Lowell in his boss, should we end the case in parallel a new set of jurors, or should we continue with that? that juror she made the decision in terms of how she has brought the dpp office into a celebrity status rather than on a legal basis by saying 
let us stop here, re empanel a new set of jewelers to continue. She didn't do that because of the so case. so so in essence in essence you are in essence you are saying she she hasn't done a good job. No, she hasn't. Okay. Somebody is saying All that um Marian Edwards saying that the parliament is a reflection of the country as it relates to corruption and selfishness. Isn't it the way around? The country is a reflection of the parliament. <laughs> Me not know. The parliament, I, I agree with the statement. The parliament um, at present is a reflection of the country where the corruption index is very, very high. But Liz, you know, um, things you say know, the country is a reflection of the parliament instead. The people them follow the leader, you know, the leaders, the leaders of the country, you know. And when you're looking at the parliament, you have people where cover murder, you have people where corrupt from when from Finsac and them sitting there. Liz, come on now, man. The people them are follow. No, but, no, but remember, remember, you know, the people are the ones who make the choices. And uh, when the people choose, all right, look at the situation with um, Peter Bunting was fired by Central Manchester. And um, Peter Bunting went and stole um, that then appointed senator on had dual citizenship. Right? Mm. Now, what the people should have done is ask demand that Peter Bunting not, because of doing that, where he told the, 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 the public that Senator Horn had American citizenship in the interest of his children who were at school. What the country should have demanded are the people in the PNP should have demanded is that, okay, you rack it out a comrade Horn, you rack him out. Therefore, we don't think that you should be made a senator and if the people had stood up and demanded that, Mark uh, Golding could have few fire to him, nose in the eye, in the mouth, in the ears. He had to obey what the people said. All right. Now, Liz, um, on a more national, on a more national level, because I don't really want to um, go in the direction of PNP politics too much. On a national level. Um, Digital Diamond says Paula has work to finish before she demits office. I think the judgment will be overturned in the appellate court. Judgments concerning the Constitution can't just stop at the lower court. What do you have to say about that? Because I don't, I don't, I don't know how it would, on what basis would it be overturned? Digital Diamond. The court is not going to, is not going to over. If the court, what the Minister of Justice is saying, you know, what the Minister of Justice is saying about appealing, that means he is appealing against his own constitution. So he will overthrow the constitution and the court is not going to join him in doing that. Mm. There is no way, no court is going to join him because what he's saying, him though, him though, um, him no sit back and really reflect yet. This is Andrew Oles leg JNP fourth attempt at the constitution. If everybody remember the letter, unsigned, undated letter that was given to Bon Tufton and oh, what's the other man they was made ambassador to Canada? Tufton and the other man. And also, um, the the needs the needs situation was another one too, and also the um the, the state of emergency, and right. then we have, we have, has always ruled in in accordance with the constitution, and he lost all three cases because of the constitutionality of his action. This is the fourth time, therefore, the, no court. How many how many has PNP PD. lost? How many has PNP lost? Okay. The PNP, I don't recall any because they haven't done any such thing. What about the they one what about bunting on with the immunity? 
I know that, you know, so that is a very interesting thing, you know, because when you really look on that one day, you know, Peter Bunting with him, um, with him bogus, corrupt, illegal immunity. Yes, it, yes, it, yes, it, the judgment will come down upon him. It, it supposedly come down upon the PNP. It really should have come down upon the PNP, you know, but when him do, him go ahead on his own and made that decision. Right. So the party, did not give the immunity to these soldiers. And that's why Peter Bunting have to leave the politics because him don't feel like, say, him supposed to have a discussion or a conversation with the people who are leading him. That is the first thing. The man come make a decision by himself and get slammed by the constitutional court. It should have been right. pushed up. Yeah, we should have heard some breaking news. The immunity that the People's National Party gave to the soldiers have been has been struck down by the supreme court but instead breaking news the immunity what peter oh jesus father me never see this <laughs> that's why it is critical to bring back civics in school because if if the party the party has a tremendous amount of legal mind brilliant and senior and they all knew, they all knew that, you know, what he did was illegal. That's why I'm saying are the people are the leaders. Because had the people been taught that, look, he's granting uh, Mrs. What's her name? Mrs. Clark. Mrs. Clark knows her constitution. She knows it. That is why she challenged the decision because she realized, and she possibly get legal advice from some lawyer from the PNP that yes, what he did, there is no governor general seal, so the pardon he has granted is illegal, unconstitutional. And maybe that's why that's it was why. so easy for the Supreme Court to um rule against Bunting. <laughs> but let me All answer right. this question now, Liz. There's one year to go. And I want to ask the labor right them over here tonight. Labor rights will talk up in a comment and call. Call in on the program. There is one year to go before a general election. And as, as some would say, it could be less than that. And we have a very serious matter in the country where information is concerned. But you can't really... Do too much about stopping the lies and so on and so forth because we have never seen this before in the PNP nor the JLP where there are so many lies coming out of one party that's either in opposition or in government. That's why I tell you to say this Rise United movement that has hijacked and taken over the PNP, they are a very dangerous group of people. So with a one year to go, for the general election. Andrew Holness, to be honest with you, is doing very poorly when it comes to information. Remember, I talk it here, you know, guys. I talk it here before, I'm going to talk it again. We're living on information age right now. And there's a war of information going on where lies versus reality. Right, and the lies are coming yeah. from the people in the PNP. Some dangerous, some serious lie. When you see them, I start telling lies on citizens in the country for endanger okay. their life and make people come kill them over politics and and, and tank and all kind of sitting. See, yesterday, Ian Eels, our day before yesterday, Ian Eels go tell lie on the lady and her common law husband. And when uh, Ian Eels was like confronted. Danger. Ian Eels did not apologize him, same stand him double down, same so want people to go kill the citizens, them over tank and politics. The lies are unprecedented, guys. We have never seen this before in a modern history, in a Jamaica. No, the question is, with one year to go, with people in desperation mode, with people dying, Murder, cover up, and all kind of something. 
what is going to happen? Like, how how does the government, because the government is trying to come back to the people, and clearly the liar them are trying to seize the power. So what is the government supposed to do at this point in time with one year to go to make sure that the Jamaican people are hearing the truth? Okay. Well, when the, the, the question of Doros extradition arose, and Bruce Golding stupidly gave the post or recommend for the post of Prime Minister Andrew Owens was a colossal mistake. The Deputy Prime Minister at the time was the Lee Kenba. All Golding should have done is uh, the mid office as he made in the presidency. Liz, 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 I'm not sure you're answering the question. Even I am, I am. Just give me a chance. Give me a chance. What he should have done is name Bob instantly deputy prime minister step up and that would ease off some of the pressure on the jlp this case is the same it is along the same line but it's not anybody what andrew oldness needs to do now because trust me the rise united movement my holding will not be allowed i repeat will not be allowed and then can't win no election general election but what Andrew Owens, if he's really of any political sense, needs to do now, one year, because memories fade, especially in Jamaican politics, what he needs to do now, immediately, tonight, is come to the nation, parliament, two there, them say, now nah, me for two months. Hmm. What he needs to do now, however, from whichever vantage point, make a presentation to the nation, I am stepping down as Prime Minister of Jamaica with one year to go, put in place the person who he will think suit the job best, have the meet with him, but put in place, and then know if he takes the limelight away, Paul Llewellyn should also aid by retiring now, step back. Now, if, he, if they both do that, his wife removes and put as member of parliament only. You then take away, after about a month or two, you take away the attention and the gear from the same situation, and you give yourself a fighting chance, right? So you're gonna have to make tremendous amount of effort. So you and think, say, so the answer to my question is, you think say Andrew Owens must step down and usher in somebody else? In, in, not in person, don't do like a Bruce Golding do. Oh, okay. What he should do is call the cabinet and the party, MP, party here together, explain it thoroughly to them, and the DPP also, that takes away the glare, it takes away the punchline, it takes away the, the strength of the little strength and galvanize the 15 minutes of publicity that the, the, the room said get and then when he does that you give the, the new man or woman who's a man put or not put but who the parties uh, nominate you give that person one year for them to build the confidence of the jamaican um, people around them right it also gives the People's National Party, the PNP, another a chance to also look at their situation in terms of the leadership and the removal of Mark Jefferson Golin. Because if the JLP does that now, that Andrew and his cast stay there now, go say about beating him three times and beat him already. If Andrew Owens tries to stay there with the, the atmosphere and the environment around the Labour Party and that is to achieve his wife's um, 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 unconstitutional behavior, the ruling of the Constitutional Court, um, the Supreme Court, which no appeal will be allowed against, then if he wants to stay there and try to play a way to call it brickhead and keep the focus on the situation which around him is cloudy, then you have good luck. 
But if he has any sense, step back. No, give the person a year, six months to a year to build their base. The new person sticks, give them a chance to build their base and gradually work to the mind of the people, the voters. Are you understand? Mm. And nullify the wrong people that went for the invaders. Nullify for them thing. And they know that is going to force the PMP to look at the leadership. Because if Mark Golden couldn't get George Wright suspended, he couldn't win the local government election, um, there were several other things he couldn't achieve. If he lose all of those things, and the JLP is in this state, this muddy water, then what will you, if the JLP may exit now, one year to go, and then you will keep on going in there with all of the defaults then, well, that has occurred, well, that means you will be stupid and want to stay in our position permanently. Mm. Well, um, tell you the truth, Andrew Owens probably did a better job in terms of, you know, several things in his first term. His second term, when he when he's up against the worst opposition leader in the history of Jamaica, he should be doing a little better. The first thing with any government, Liz, Liz, the first thing with any government or any opposition leadership, you must have people who are dealing with your information. What that means is the country is supposed to know what you're doing in your job capacity on a daily basis, right? Me talk per year, say Andrew Owens must get a PR, not a PR, get a press secretary to come out to the people them every day. Two days after that, somebody sent me one video with Naomi Campbell, then put you up on TikTok, one, one minute 33 sec, and Naomi Campbell is not a good. <laughs> Let me repeat it again. Naomi Campbell is not a good per secretary. And it's like they're, 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 they're now as tone deaf as the PNP. The PNP is tone deaf, you know. Or should I say, the PNP. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Whoever they are, because I could call some name who are not in the in the in the wrong movement and them tone deaf too. So the, the politicians in Jamaica, most of them, them have a tone deafness problem because them feel like so once them get elected, them have all the answers, them not listen to the people anymore. And this is one of the reasons why the people them stop vote. So Right here now, with, with, with Andrew Olness and his wife, I'm telling you, say, Juliet Olness is causing her husband a lot of problems politically. She's turning people off from him, and I don't care which one I want to leave her right one talk, say, I lie, me, I tell her, I don't think so. I care zero. What I am talking is what I, what I see happening. A woman is not supposed to stand up in her husband's way when he might try to do him job. Juliet owns up a million other things she can go do. She's a business woman. She have this a company construction whatsoever. Why does she have to end? Why does she have to thrust herself into the politics at a time when her husband is there? This is why I'm going to lose. If I'm not careful, I only can go tell him something. Says so I don't care. The truth is the truth. People feel have sense. You think say you I fear husband or you I fear wife. Can go to an employer tomorrow morning and say, hello, the two of we want to apply for a position in your company. Then go and run, you know. Because they must say the two are not up to no good. It's no different, it's no different in politics, you know. Whether them elected or not. If the two of them did it one time, it, people are gonna be very skeptical about it. And then the information part of it, I don't know why. You listen, the lies that are out there. And the liars, who some of them are being paid by Mark Golding and Peter Bunting, they're out there. They're on this very platform on YouTube. Who is, who, who is talking to Andrew and the government? Who is saying to them, listen, we need to look here. Uno have TV, uno have radio. Uno have, you know, uno have a thing where you can put out a press secretary 
every day to speak to not, not just the Jamaican people, but to the press and the media of the country. Why, why can't you see that that would be a very effective way of making sure the Jamaican people are getting truth, are absorbing truth? that the press and the media would have better information to disseminate, better and truthful information to disseminate to the country. I, I, I so me make people don't want to involve in our politics and just become some very yeah, harsh I, critics I, I, of I their... politics get blamed because of their action, which is nothing is wrong with politics. Politics is good and healthy. It is the characteristic or the characters with these by the characteristics that has come forward and that's why i had to answer earlier on the people are the leaders because the people know it's going to have to take greater look keener interest in who are the persons coming because it don't make sense you know that the people them say them runway labor party from led by, I did, you put it brilliant earlier on, this man who thinks he's king, this white man from England, born in England, Liverpool, thinks he's king. And we, the subjects, must just do the work, put him there, and he lives, and he said, with somebody, a fan him, one fan, a person with a big, a fan from the right, one from the left, one behind him, and then he, man, all lift up in chair, and I'm sure that, the people that must start begin to look, listen, and know who are these characters. That's why I say one of the things Prime Minister Anna, President of the PMP, must do. Every person that comes when she's in charge must give a police record of no from local authorities and international. They must know and they must face a public panel for the whole Jamaica voter. You're going to have certain more information because you must bring back because the, 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 the democracy is in trouble. We need to bring back the people to want to participate in the voting process. We're in trouble. 37%. Well, that, that's, that's the question that I ask. This is the question that I ask um, a friend that called me today around lunchtime. Is that um what what is what is Jamaica doing? All these politicians, what are they doing to get the people to start engaging again? Nothing. All them are do a fight one another and I tell be like I tell be a lie and I put them most things are putting bloggers and paying bloggers to come on social media can help the Jamaican people them to participate. All it is is mud slinging, you know. That's all it is is mud slinging. But 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 they, they should all they should all be aiming to make sure say the Jamaican people come back and participate because listen we have we have seen worse days in our politics and nobody never come out in our politics like Jamaica people them right but no no when we not we not really have no political unrest on them sitting there and the people them just now look on them people here. Now listen to them, now follow them. And anyway. that is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. That's why I'm saying, if Andrew Oles is having a sense, take one year to go, step away now. Make Juliet go a back bench, just the MP. Then, after you... Well, well on, the Andrew, uh, wait, the Andrew for step away or Juliet must step away? Which one? Are Andrew, two of them. Both of them. Andrew will step down as Prime Minister. And put who Julie there? Who forgot there? No, who the, party, the party is going to meet and decide who they going to want here. And Juliet Oldness, who should never have been in the house any at all, Juliet is just going to go to the back bench and be the MP. She does, that is just, she can't get the ministry that goes should not be the speaker. If they do that, then and the PMP keep the king uh, golden uh, in place. Then and them do them work. Then them easy sailing. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, boy. Go face up against him again. It can cause serious, serious 
um, problem because the water turnouts are going to drop from 37 in a general to about 30, and the local government will be even worse. And then now, Peter Bunty now will get broke up because Peter Bunty has spent $7 billion, $7 billion Jamaican dollar, that company is beating him, so lose $7 billion. All right, Liz. Liz, may yeah. I ask Miss Prudence for calling? Come, call Miss Prudence. Says she agree with you, Mr. Owens is going to let the JLP lose the community. More Prudence, Carlos, make we hear why you said that, Liz. Yes, I'm gonna let Miss Prudence call in. Now. You, 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 you're listening, right? Yeah, I am listening. Yes. Thank you for your contribution. I really want to hear why Miss Prudence is saying that she agree with you. Because most of the people, they must say, no, no. Andrew, not for step down and all them something there. So, uh, make, make we hear what I go on. As usual, thank you, Liz. Come back tomorrow. Yes. I will call you tomorrow. All right. On the topic of um, proven wealth. And we're going to tell the people them what proven have to do with DB and G and what they're plan for the Jamaica people them. Uh, All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Guys, the reason why I have Omar Davis on the screen is because I want to say to you that anybody who this wicked man bring forth to the people, they cannot be any good. It's that simple, you know. Most of them who come over here to so come listen to me at night time. Uno born, uno born before the 90s. And if you don't born before the 90s, you pick them, you must tell them about Omar Davis. Anybody who Omar Davis bring coming at the politics and say, them, them, them are the best to do this or anything like that. Run them, guys. You don't want nobody coming from this tribe of wickedness. Uno no, imama gold in them um, engineered finsack and unleash upon the people them, hike up the interest rate and make the people them lose everything. I uploaded, I uploaded a video today where it is titled, there's a part one and a part two. It is titled Finsack. The biggest transfer of wealth from the poor and the middle class to the rich. And then there is part two where we say FINSA beneficiaries. Oh, that's part two. That, yeah. Let me tell you about part one. Lord Jesus, I wish part it. Let's see it here. Part one over 44,000 Jamaican businesses and entrepreneurs. Ruined, migrated, and dead as a result of FinSAC. That is why I have this man on the screen. Don't let this man come handing on Mark Golden and bunting them. Don't. They're no good. I am not telling you to dash out the whole PNP and the baby with the, with the bathtub or all the one call. It. Don't do that. Because you need two political parties functioning in the country. I always say there's nothing wrong with the political parties in Jamaica. The problem is the people in the political party. The people these parties are recruiting and putting to the voters. That is the problem. Examine them, guys. Examine these people and look who them wrap up with. We don't want to murder us, guys, for coming for come in our politics and in our face, them and them people who help them commit murder and they sit there and cover it up. And who scam out Jamaica people them from when? No, man. Different slate of people now, man. When, is, when are Jamaicans going to stand up and say enough is enough? What I am going to say... I don't think, I don't know if I agree with Liz saying Andrew Wallace must step down. Um, let me tell you now. Yes, when Andrew Wallace said bulldoze the woman else, me personally tell some of my friends, they say he cannot go back into a next election. 
When Andrew Wallace bulldozed the people them house, I said, Jesus Christ, what is this? Bad to bad, me not care what the situation. There has to be a better way you could have done this more than to take a bulldozer to the people them house. That was a wicked act that I saw play out. And I tag Andrew Wallace on social media and say, say if you don't give back your people them their house, you are going to go down in history as the worst thing around here in our politics. And Mr. Andrew Oles take up the woman with a ball in the blue shirt. Jamaica will never forget that image of the woman balling for her house. In the orange wig and the blue shirt. When me look them send sitting come give me say, look here, the woman there parliament. And it looked like the woman never get back her house or the woman because she was smiling. She was very happy. So what happened is it looked like Andrew Owens was misinformed. And hastily moved to bulldoze the people them house. Without knowing what was going on over there. Because it looked like him never understand or him never know say people that build property, whether it be people that sell house the wrong way or land problem or you know illegal sitting, but here one now. You can't come tell the people them say you're a bulldoze down house because of illegal activities when you have not taken in, arrested, and charged the people them who are at sell the land them illegally. That doesn't make any sense. What about the people who were selling the lands illegally? To prove that what you did was right, you have to get the police to arrest and charge these people for illegally selling the lands. But, but that did not happen. But nonetheless, the woman come up parliament and smile, she get back her house. And it looked like, say, Andrew Onis made amends. The police commissioner and the security minister, what them do about the, about the people them where I sell illegal land and them something there? Nobody not arrested and charged. So what? How, how should we believe them? It doesn't make any sense. So when people say, say boy, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make amends for the house, them a bulldoze, whether I'm getting wrong information or whatsoever. And this is where it's so critical that information is disseminated to the people. When people see these things happen, they want to know why you did it. They want to know who was it that was selling these, these illegal lands. What information did you get from who that would have caused you to go bulldoze down the people in place? So, being that he sort of made amends for it, a lot of people forgive him and whatsoever. Now at this stage in the game with one year to go, guys. One year to go for the next general election. It doesn't make sense that Andrew Owen stepped down in my view. I think his wife needs to come off the speaker bench because she's compromising him big time. Juliet Owen must come down. She, she, she did what she did to the house clerk and them something there. I don't even want to get into it because it's so, it, it just rubs me the wrong way. And it's very disgusting to see people get a little power and start wield it and diss up people and bring down people. I don't like people like that. So I'm not going to get into it. But what I will say is she's making it very bad for a prime minister who has lost some popularity. I am not saying that to say that Andrew Owens is less than Mark Golding in any way, because he's not. Andrew Holness speaks better. He carry himself better. He interact with people better. He has, he definitely has, um, he definitely has the edge over Mark Golding in several ways, important ways. So you present yourself to the people and them something there. Him, uh, him have it. But there's a lot of things where I work against him, like his wife, like the people him who responds for, you know, the information and press secretary. And him need to stand up in the thing like a man right now and tell him why I say, look, come down from there and also appoint 
find and appoint a decent press secretary who is a mover and shaker to get the information out to the people. Because to be honest with you guys, I see Andrew Wallace is doing quite a bit. You know, I think he's doing quite a bit, you know, the best he know how. And a lot of it, it's not being put to the, to the people in a real way. And that is attributed to the fact that his information, his information arm is weak. The people they were supposed to come out and talk to the country every day and tell them what they tell the Jamaican people and the world and the press and the media. They're supposed to have come out every day and tell the country what's on the Prime Minister's agenda today. Where is he going to go break ground? What, what is he going to do? Uh, what the government, I should say, not just the Prime Minister, but the government. What is the government going to do? You know, which water system they're going to fix tomorrow and all these things. Them people, them, them not have it. And I just the truth. Naomi, she not have it. And also have a response for information, then don't have it. You can't come out and talk to the people on Wednesday alone. And when you come out, all you do is trace people and are in an argument with people. That doesn't make sense. The press secretary is supposed to come out every day, Monday to Friday, and tell the nation, say, Minister this, Minister that, the Prime Minister, or anybody. They might come out and do this today. They might go there to West Milan, a fixed one water system. They might go there over Centre Mass, a break ground for the road and all this. You can't just put that on Facebook and they make it stay there, so. You can't just put this on Twitter and make it stay there, so. Yeah, you need to do those things, but you also need to have the press and the media meeting in a room each day with your press secretary so that your press secretary can disseminate or help disseminate the information that the country and the people them need to know and where they might expect from the government. That is how they're supposed to do it, you know, guys. But them, them, are, people, them are ready for prime time. Them are ready for a first world approach. Them stuck in their old ways. And that is not going to help. Remember, I'm not up against a set of demons. Because that's the only term I can find for these people who, 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 who are now taking set on citizens. These people who are now getting in their vehicles. Looking for a scandal, looking for something wrong, and they have turned their venom on the Jamaican people, going onto their property, trespassing onto their property, taking their picture, taking video of their property, and putting their business on social media, lying on them. So, what are they going to do? No, JIS have fit and work for do. Me not talk about JIS. JIS should do their job, but I'm talking specifically about a press secretary. I want you, since you don't seem to understand Rob Kennedy, look at the press secretary in America, for example. It's a very effective way to get information to the public. We have to come out of our old style and our old ways and understand that we are dealing with a serious war of information at this time. You have different kinds of war, you know, in case you don't understand, you know. You have physical war. You have ear war, grown war, legal war. And in this time, we have a war, a serious war of information going on in Jamaica. What part of that you don't understand? We have a serious war of information going on in Jamaica. Liad. People who, people who murder people and can't tell lie about it.
That is what we are dealing with. You are not going to beat these people at their game. Because the shit that they do, you're not going to do it. So you are not going to beat them at their game. So you will need to come with your ammunition of the truth and get it out the right way. That's what I'm saying. Very simple enough. It's very simple. I wonder if you understand where I come from. People will see murder and no murder and cover it up. You're, 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 oh, you're going to war with them people. They use a murderer. Eh? Use a liar and a thief and a wicked. You can't war with them people. Eh? You cannot war with them people because for them strategy what them are going to use. You're not going to do that. And that's what I try to tell you. No? So you have to work with the right strategy and get the right the right set of people him, to carry out righteousness. That's basically what I say. I wonder if you understand. You are up against a wicked set of people. We have to have sense in our people. And we have to know where do I know how to fight, you know, different wars. I don't end up a physical fight and, you know, them, them kind of something. I talk about war of information. I ain't know why I can't talk. I have fought that war before with these people and they've lost. Remember me not liar. So when I talk over here, so things will make sense. We're not going to beat them at their propaganda. We're not going to beat them at their lies. Because they have no limits. And them who can go cover murder, they have no limits. So unless you are of that same fabric, then go right ahead. War with them in that way. But if you are not of that fabric, you are going to arm yourself with the truth and you are going to use it properly. Social media politics is what the risers them and mark and bunt in them. All them are around social media politics. That's their only strategy. Because you know who are on them social media? Little bit of blood and buntings concubine. And some look one and two. Some look one and two people where me not really want to criticize them too harshly because maybe them have a mental problem. So, in the interest of the country, I don't even care. But for the interest of the country, you cannot have a population that is being fed with lies, propaganda, and misinformation. You have to get a handle of the situation as a government. Sylvia, maybe walk free in Jamaica, you know. He might walk free in Jamaica. I don't know. But one thing me know, as me tell you last night, the truth of what happened to Melissa and the lies they told were fully explained. Fully explained. And sent to some agencies around the world. So they might can run in a Jamaica, but they can't hide in the world. Remember when I talk, nothing when I go say no. I will have a links and know what contacts to make a reach out to or to get our point across in the real way. And when we talk about war, we are talking about intelligent war. Remember me telling you say. These risers and Bunting and Golden and Data and Campbell them were reported to the U.S. Embassy before Melissa was killed. And those correspondence were received. So now with this, 
What do you think is going to happen? So they can they they can work their local witchcraft and do their corrupting if they want to. It's not gonna be easy, but they can do it if they want. The person who asks if Sylvia is gonna walk free, they can do whatever they want. But one thing I know and I can tell you no. Our international allies will have nothing to do with them. And this may cause some serious harm. Remember, I said Jamaica import most of 50% of their food, you know. Remember that, you know, among other things, you know. Majority of our goods and services are imported. So let them play with it if they want to. Let them play with it if they want to. People in Jamaica might free it for talk out for Melissa. Melissa spent four years living in the U.S. in Virginia where she went to college. So the very party where she grew up in her and married in her and dead in her, they might not go talk fair and true and their boss. But not everybody is going to do that. So what them try to sweep under the rug and what them try to tell the people so she did in her sleep of aneurysm and natural cause, friggin' lie, they're exposed. And they're exposed to the right set of people then. That's all on the need for now. I agree we bloggers who see the plot and form an alliance to counter the lies with truth. True, the government is not adding pressure on the opposition cult. There are times where the cult expose themselves, you know. You understand? But you see, at this point in time, the information issue in the country must be addressed, right? And let me tell you something. You see, them who in a Jamaica will come up on social media and tell life on people, a grown and a terrorized citizens in the country. Tell life on them like what Ian Eels do. Uh, oh, them, um, the man who owned the funeral home, the gentleman, they forgot him name. Or oh, them are put up, put up the man business on social media. You say, if I did in America, then they law enforcement go to them already, you know. Law enforcement go to them already. Right? Because what they might do, they might try to put information for cause disruption and problem. And endanger people's lives. And I know everything you must carry the Supreme Court. Some things you have to take immediate, immediate legal action against. But it is what it is. In a certain countries like uh, South Korea, so North Korea, and so other country, me don't like oppression, you know. But you see too much freedom. Trust me, too much freedom can destroy countries. We have to be careful, guys. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up here now. Don't forget that um, in the coming weeks, maybe, you're going you're gonna to get a collaboration over here with this platform and Karen Cross and Jamaica 411. We're going to give you guys a collaboration, right? When we used to be live on Twitter, <laughs> we used to be live on Twitter and all are with upon the same platform. Sometimes even the media, them at Jamaica, come listen. A 5,000 or whole heap of thousand of people on Twitter come listen. A night time. We did that for a while. It was short lived though because, you know, the Twitter Twitter spaces are different. Kettle of fish. But trust me, this, this is not one that we don't want to miss on this platform, right? So look out for that, guys. Um, let me see here.
Rest in peace to Melissa. Me not saying rest in peace, you know. I never use those terms, but rest in peace. And you know why? Melissa can't rest in peace until she get justice. Not when you've got so many people working against her and trying to deny her of justice from the very beginning. From them come tell the nation say she died in her sleep from aneurysm for natural cause. From the jump, they started denying her justice. So I'm not going to use the rest in peace something, you know. A justice for Melissa at the hashtag over here, so. When she get justice, then we can't say rest in peace because we know for sure she going to rest in peace them time day. Right now, Melissa want her children them to get justice and want her killer them exposed. Yeah, man, the collaborate. I'm sorry, so we never did know it. No in time with that, though. Um, do the collaboration upon the Twitter sphere. Remember, say upon Twitter, you can go live, you know. Um, it was good. It was sometimes it was so funny, you know, because sometimes me say, me say this a newspaper, this a media house, the whole of them, this a journalist, the whole of them over there with their ears. I listen. And when they go up and they read um, in the next man and then talk one what they hear. Yes, um, Jamaica 411 is very interesting. I love her. She sounds very intelligent. Yes, man. She's very serious when it comes down to information. Yes, yeah, so uh, we just have to organize a date and time. And once that's done, we'll make the announcement. And we we'll make sure so we we'll run out feet. We we'll don't no regret it. Uh, somebody said Karen is the next one. She's not patriotic. What do you mean by that? You don't think she's patriotic? Let me see. Um, them over here listen now. Me know, man. Me know. But that's okay. Good night, Lola. Good to see you back. Thanks for joining. We are sensible people. We listen analytically so we know what to sift out. Thank God. Thank God. All this information that is being mentioned on the platform, is there any investigation in these regards? Um, Chief of Staff, we are dealing with a developing country. Jamaica. And when we talk about developing, we're not talking about just fixing roads and highways. We're talking about, for example, and I see somebody asked the question earlier about whether with all the corruption and whatsoever, if when we you know politicians being prosecuted, our justice system must be developed as well. And the next DPP that come in, is that DPP going to be afraid to touch our politicians in the country? So when you ask if there's any investigation or rare, look at the stuff that they're getting away with now. Our vloggers and bloggers like we will come out here and turn it on and talk everything on our business. You understand? No, we need the people them, who said them a prosecutor, and them are integrity commission and all kind of. We need them people to gain the same courage. Get them security and find the courage. Because then we kill them, you know. No feel no way. Look what them do, Melissa. Then we kill them. But them need to get them security and get them God. And carry out their work aggressively to make sure that Jamaica comes out of this perpetual state of developing. We need to be developed. For the last 40, 60 odd years, we are de we're developing. We can't develop yet. Because why? They're the problem.
one of the one of the things I want to come out here and talk to you guys about too. One of them night here. Now that we're talking about politicians and political connection are I want to talk to you about the murder that took place in a Patrick Bailey house. Because a case like that could never be unsolved in America. And I use America to say that we need to gain some courage and develop some better investigate some better investigation techniques. One, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about it and let you know what I think. The murder that took place in Patrick Bailey House. Nobody cannot die in my house, gunshot and stab up. And I go call police and tell police, say, me in my house, not here, nothing at all. And for them to come take up man out of my house, we're dead. Does that make sense, guys? Which part, which other country that could have happened in? Which other country? Why the investigators couldn't find out who did that to Jermaine in a Patrick Bailey house? Did Paula ever make a statement on that case? Guys, tell you the truth. Sometimes people get so friggin' fed up with these people because guess what? Every time when you see these situations arise where the politics is concerned, they are always connected politically. Always. Right? They are always connected politically. See, Silvera connected to PNP. And Patrick Bailey connected to the JLP. So when I come back with it with the program, um maybe I'll do it sometime in the week, maybe Monday or so. Right? You are going to see Patrick Bailey represented Andrew Holness as a, as an attorney. He represented Andrew Holness as an attorney. Yes. And Patrick Bailey good friend of Orlando Terry Long. And they say that the weapon that was used to take out Jermaine was connected to thugs in Terry Long's constituency. So what is the connection? Why can't police make the connection and bring them to justice? Whoever did that to Jermaine in a Patrick Bailey house. Something is wrong in our country, guys. Something is very wrong. We cannot have people who are politically connected getting away with these very serious crimes. Crimes that people, crime, very serious crimes, which people like cartel could not get away with. Oh, no, no, he said something wrong. We can't carry on like this. We just can't. We can't have two justice system. Because you see the same way like how nothing not come out of the murder of Patrick Bailey House is the same way Silvera is expecting nothing to come out of the murder of Melissa Silvera. Jolian Parchment, little bit of blood, Mark Gold and Peter Bunting, the whole of them, them don't want nothing, nothing to come out of this case. And that's why I have to always stand on the side of Jamaica. There was a time when this argument floating in Jamaica. Oh, labor right are wicked. Labor are wicked. Well, the PNP, them are come show the country now, say. Them have wicked in there too. 
And the wicked where them have in there, them not shoot out wicked, you know, them hug up wicked, you know. And this the politics come to in Jamaica. Who do you know why I'm for talking, you know, so I'm going to just cut it right here, so. Tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow, I'm going to come tell you about proven wealth and what it means for you, what it means for them. And what the politics and power has to do with them and proven wealth, their past and their future, the hope for their future if they should get power in a Jamaica. Only don't miss it tomorrow night. And as I say, I'm not gonna come on Sunday, but on Monday. I will come to you guys and tell you how I feel about the situation in Patrick Bailey House and the um, the case being called. It's a cold case. And I am also going to look to see, I don't remember seeing anything that um, Paula said publicly regarding that case, but I'm not going to say she didn't say anything because I don't know, but I will go see. If she made any statement or any comment as the country's top prosecutor, what did she say about that case? I don't know what she could have said if the police, if the police still have the case as an open case. So guys, make sure someone keeping it locked here to Jamaica politics and covering you know, the numbers over here, sir. Unaga always get the truth and unbiased truth. No fubble double over here. Make sure so not invite no friends or no family. Come over the platform here, right? This is the new channel. This is the new platform. We're happy to be here. You understand, guys? When I watch no face, we just come here to talk the truth. You know, and to keep you guys or help keep you guys informed. I thank you for joining. Thank you for your emails, your messages, your well wishes, and all your, you know, support. Even if you like, you just comment. Appreciate every one of you guys who participate and help keep the platform going. It tells me and it tells us that we're doing something right, you know, and people really and truly want to see some change. And that's a good thing. Right? So I'll catch you guys again. And thank you so much again for your support and loyalty. Have a good night, guys. Take care.